Hi, I'm Hayden Nelson, Product Manager for Arkham Wireless Test at National Instruments, and today I want to show you a demonstration of envelope tracking in DPD using uh, some of our PXI instrumentation. So here's the demonstration system I have here. I have a number of instruments in the PXI chassis. In the chassis, we have a PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver, and we have this synchronized through the PXI backplane with, with patented NIT, NIT clock technology where we're synchronizing with a PXIE 5451 to get very tight synchronization between our arbitrary waveform generator and our RF signal generator. So this is the fundament, one of the fundamental uh, things to envelope tracking test is that we're, we need to synchronize the baseband signal and the RF signal very tightly and have them very tightly aligned at the interface to the DUT. So not only do we need to start them and keep them synchronized, we need to have the ability to align these two signals at this DUT. We're powering this whole evaluation board with the PXIE 4139. And this has, has the ability to take very rapid uh, samples of current so we can calculate the efficiency of this. Envelope tracking is a technique to improve the efficiency of this power amplifier. We're, we're visualizing our signals, the time domain signals, with a PXIE 5162 high-speed digitizer. I'm actually routing the RF signal through a splitter to this as well, so we can visualize the RF and the baseband and, and get a visual sense of their synchronization. We're, and we're using the analyzer portion of the vector signal transceiver to do our RF analysis. So let's jump right into the measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and click run on this VI. And here in the top left we can see we have the in, in red we have our LTE amplitude modulated RF signal displayed on the same uh, plot with our amplitude modulated power supply signal. And so we've already put the our RF signal through a shaping table and come up with the appropriate voltage uh, to supply to our device on a sample by sample basis. And so here you can see that the two signals are very well synchronized but they're not aligned. And so by them being misaligned, we can see over here that our spectrum has a lot of spectral regrowth, our EVM is quite poor, our ACPR is 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 no good. These, you know, in in the AMPM performance is 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 you know, all these metrics are looking that this device is not performing optimally at all. So we can hit, I'm going to hit an alignment procedure here where we're going to sweep these two signals. So we're sweeping the, the baseband and the RF signal relative to each other. They're, already, they're synchronized. And we can get a plot here of the, in an understanding of, of how the performance of the device on, uh, at the relative offset. So I'm going to hit that one more time. So you can see here that the AMPM is adjusting in real time as well as the spectrum and EVM and we're plotting the ACP and the EVM versus delay. And as you can see here, there's a point in both of these plots where the ACP and the EVM is at a minimum. And it's at that point what, that we're pretty confident that we're synchronized and so we've chosen that point and you can see here on the time domain plot that these two signals are quite synchronized. So that whole procedure didn't take that much time but one of the uh, things you would like, everyone would like to do in any automated test is actually is to go faster. So one of the unique benefits of the National Instruments uh, software approach to this is we have a patent pending algorithm for a fast align alignment algorithm where we can actually do a quick um, course align and then only have to take a few points to do that last fine uh, fine alignment sweep. So let's run that with the quick with the fast align and it's already done. So here we're back synchronized um, and, and we're at, a, at an appropriate you know, ACP and EVM for this device. So when, we're, when one is doing envelope tracking with a power amplifier, uh, one of the problems that can occur is it can induce more AM, AM, and AM, PM distortion. Ideally both of these plots would be a flat line and so to back out those distortions that are either in the PA just from its, its behavior or because of envelope tracking, you can apply digital pre-distortion. So I'm turning on digital pre-distortion. You can see that we flattened out our AM, AM, and AM, PM. You can tell that we're pushing this PA into compression here at the top end, so DPD can only correct for so much. If you're push, getting too close to the uh, saturation of the amplifier, then there's really nothing much you can do. So looking at the impact of this on the LTE performance and how this is going to you know, work in the system is, is um, we, and so again we can see the effects of this, applying this digital pre-distortion um, uh, to, the, to the spectrum here. So turning this on and off you can see that it has an impact on, on, the, uh, on the spectrum. And we can actually you know, 
you know, stop this this application. I could power this down, repower it up, and 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 rerun this application. This will start you know, as it restarts. They're misaligned. Hit my fast align, and as it as it completes, we're we're back aligned. And and that that alignment procedure and that that alignment number is very repeatable. So we have best in class synchronization because all this instrument it, instrumentation is integrated into a PXI chassis, so there's no cables to uh, to have to manage, and, and different links that can mean different synchronization values. So you have to rerun that synchronization. You actually will not have to rerun that synchronization because the system is so repeatable.